Day and night cycles in video games has been a long-standing desire for game developers and players alike. It's a feature that not just adds visual flair but also adds depth and complexity to the gameplay experience. In the realm of indie games, I'm trying to implement a day and night cycle feature to our game Wisplite, a reverse RPG game that lets you play as the monster in an island inhabited by human settlers exploiting your island home. In this devlog, I will share with you my thought process on how the addition of dynamic day and night cycles not only affect the game visually, but also plays a crucial element of gameplay in our indie game Wisplite. And as a bonus, we will also be talking about which tools and assets I'm using to make these systems. Let's get started. Adding day and night cycles to our indie game is not just about the visuals, but the main purpose for this system is to attempt to make the game world feel alive with all of the island's inhabitants adapting and responding to the changes. One of the key mechanics that will be affected by day and night cycles is their visual range. During the day, enemies tend to have higher visual range compared to nighttime. They easily spot you meters away when the sun is high up. This mechanic is very crucial, especially for the tree creature, where you have the ability to lower the light shining from your wisp, giving you a stealthy ability. Apart from visual range, one key element that I want to implement in this system is to have our enemy's behavior react to it. For example, I want our mercenary group to return to the nearest settlement to rest and resupply when it's almost nighttime. But if they're too far away from an outpost, we want them to set up camp nearby while some of them rest and others do their work collecting life essence while others keep an eye out for threats. Another example is for civilian settlers. We want the settlers to do their work at daytime and head back to the settlements nearby at nighttime. Likewise, we want this behavior in the human mines. We only want the human slave miners to do their mining at daytime. Apart from individual behaviors from our human factions, we also want to have our events affected by day and night cycles. For example, we will have an event that only happens during the night where a group of hunters that specializes in stealth hunts you down for your bounty. Or we will trigger events where bandits try to ransack a caravan passing by as you explore the roads nearby. Also, resources delivered from your dungeons from your captured settlements will be computed by day's end. We don't want to compute the resources for your dungeons real time. We want to optimize it and only compute it once a day in a logbook where you will see all the resources from all your territories captured. There will also be places and NPCs that are only accessible at a certain time. For example, Cassandra will have her sleep at night and you can't interact with her at a certain period of time. There's also a period in time where Cassandra will leave the dungeon's library to go to a nearby lake to take a bath. Or at noon, she will cook in the kitchen or forage for food in the forest nearby. As much as we can, we want to make our game as alive as possible. To do all of these mechanics, I plan on making an event manager that is triggered by the hour of day. And one of the easiest thing to do to get this mechanic started is to use a ready-made asset called Enviro, where it has a day and night cycle mechanics and a weather system that can be easily added to your game and can also be modified easily by scripts. If you're interested in this asset, I'll put a link down in the description. So just to give you an idea on how easy it is to use this asset, I'll give you a little demonstration on how I implemented it to my game with Splite. First, just like any other assets, is to make it a habit to read the documentation. Everything you need to get Enviro started is explained in detail in the documentation, so take your time reading and understanding it. So to start Enviro, you simply just go to Assets, then Create, then look for Enviro, then select Enviro Sky Manager. It will create a game object automatically for you. Then simply select Enviro Sky Manager, and as what the documentation tells you, it will ask for some player and camera references. You can also activate Enviro on different project types. In our case, our project is HDRP. Once you're all set, you just need to click Activate. Then it will create and activate the Enviro Sky standard with all the settings for your day and night cycle and weather settings. When you click on these options, it will open the menu for the settings of that specific feature. I'll give you some examples, and to save time, I'll just be showing the top features that are most interesting and helpful for your game. On the top most is lighting. Lighting was one of the most difficult and time-consuming aspects in my development experience. When modifying light settings alone, 
I had a hard time adjusting the settings during the day because it will affect the exposure at night. To explain to you further, before I used Enviro, every time I adjusted my exposure at day to get the right lighting, the nighttime is also affected, resulting in very dark night times. Likewise, when I adjust the game's exposure relative to nighttime, the daytime will look super bright. Good thing that Enviro has a setting that will allow you to adjust the exposure levels of the game using a curve chart which uses the variables of the chart to set the exposure levels of your scene depending on the time of day, resulting in a seamless and smooth transition of our exposure and light settings. This feature alone saved me a lot of time with my lighting and exposure. And this is not the only feature Enviro has to offer. There are still a lot of features that will help our game development journey faster and efficient. One of which is our sky settings. Yes, everything you see in the sky, we have an option for it. You can customize your sky box, you can set the color of the sun to any color you want. You can also adjust its brightness. You can set your moon size, the placement, even have faces of the moon depending on the day of the month. Or you can simply customize the faces by yourself. There's also a cube map for your stars, and all the necessary settings needed to adjust the brightness of all your celestial bodies. You can even set how your stars twinkle in the night. With this feature alone, it saves me a lot of development time, figuring things out, coding, and making the assets myself. It's awesome, beautiful, and easy to use. The last feature that I want to show in this devlog is how Enviro manages and controls your time. All the features that are packaged in Enviro is tied to this controller, and this is the time and locations control. Basically, this controls how fast the time moves in your game, and it automatically manages all the features tied to it to synchronize with it seamlessly. You can set the days and years past here, and it will show you a true-to-life representation of your skybox in the perspective of your longitude and latitude location. You can also set here the speed on how fast time moves by setting your cycle length in minutes. Apart from that, you can also set your weather effects and how often the weather changes in your game as time passes by. There's also seasons that changes as time moves through the entire year within your game. And as seasons change, the weather changes as well. And lastly, this time controller has a built-in events manager that will automatically run your scripts when a certain time or weather condition is set, which is one of the key features that I will be using in my dynamic events. I'm happy that I found this incredible asset. It saved me a lot of time making all these features from scratch. If you're interested in this asset, I'll leave a link down below for those who are interested in using this asset in their games. Also. I'd like to thank my Patreons for supporting me all the way in my game dev journey. In the next devlog, we will continue our journey exploring the weather mechanics that Enviro has to offer. Till next time.